A man has a major heartbreak when he's told his baby has died during labor. He lives with painful and haunted memories of his dead baby until he accidentally discovers it was alive. But before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Fourteen years later, David was on his flight, daydreaming of how he'd be cuddling with his newborn baby in just a few hours. He was his first child with the love of his life, his wife Andrea, who went into labor a week ago while he was away on a business trip with high expectations. David left the airport to see his wife and child. He was so excited and hurried home with toys and a heart full of joy, only to be told that his baby had died during delivery and was already laid to rest. David collapsed, crying. He had prepared a long list of baby essentials to shop, had big plans for the nursery and nursery, and even took paternal leave. He was crushed. Was it a he or she? He cried to Andrea. It was a girl, a beautiful baby girl, darling. She had your eyes and nose. She snatched her happiness away, sobbed to Andrea. David was devastated. He could no longer pull himself together to see the nursery or gather all the toys he got for his baby. He hated seeing his own reflection in the mirror. Several emotions of pain and anger haunted him as he cursed destiny for doing this to him. My baby, why didn't she wait for me to come, he cried near the little graveside. Two years later, David slowly started to come out of his loss. He still had hopes of restoring his fatherhood and planned plan for another baby with his wife. But Andrea turned down his idea, saying they needed to take precautions and avoid pregnancy again. Honey, the doctors advised me to opt for birth control. They said, I'm too weak to bear another child, and the delivery could be complicated. David pictured his whole world getting ripped apart after hearing Andrea out. But he loved children, and it hurt him deeply to think he couldn't have any. Twelve years passed since then, with a painful, hollow feeling in David's heart. Got promoted twice, started his own family business, and his wealth multiplied during this time, but his only regret was the void left behind by his dead baby girl. And then one day, David opted for a DNA test to learn more about his He ordered an at-home DNA test kit and sent his samples for testing, knowing little of it would unfold the long hidden truth about the baby he thought was dead. David was not expecting anything new from the test other than information about his distant relatives and any genetic diseases he might have. But to his surprise, he discovered that he had matched with an anonymous girl by 99%. So who is this girl and why does my DNA may match hers, he wondered. He checked for more details about the girl, but couldn't find anything else. That's weird. What's her name and who is she? David sat back in deep thought and suddenly remembered the life of wild party and blind hookups he enjoyed during his college days. Well, guilty of his past, he confessed his suspicions to Andrea. Honey, I always wanted to tell you, you must already be aware of how I partied a lot during college, even hooked up with a few random girls I met. Andrea was puzzled about what David was talking about. She knew about his past, but had no clue why he was bringing that up. Now I took a DNA test, and I strangely matched with an anonymous girl. But I don't know how and who she is, he revealed. Andrea paled all of a sudden. She assumed he found out about her secret and started to cry, sending him into a frenzy. Honey, please forgive me for hiding the truth. She's still alive. I gave her up for adoption as soon as she was born because I didn't want to have kids so early. I never wanted kids. But that pregnancy was just accidental. I didn't want to commit to it, but it was too late. I wanted a life of parties and vacations and felt having children would ruin my plans. Our daughter, what David heard, next made him furious. He went to the hospital where Andrea delivered the baby and pressed the nurse who attended her delivery for details. It turned out that the girl was born healthy and hardy and sent with a mother a few days after delivery. David stormed home and threatened Andrea he'd divorce her. Fearing this, she disclosed the address of the foster home where she left the baby 14 years ago. Following day, David hurled the divorce papers at Andrea's face, saying it was the only punishment he could think of for what she did. After a lengthy legal tussle, David and Andrea split. He took all the money from their joint bank account and kicked her out for her wrongdoing. David then set out a mission to reconcile with his daughter. Little did David know that it wouldn't be that easy because the girl had lived all her life assuming her father didn't want her and hated it. David arrived on the doorstep of the foster family that raised his daughter and begged to send her with him. Why did you come? We were told that you didn't want your daughter, Lisa. In the first place, we adopted her and raised her for so many years. She hates you, go away, they feuded. But David's heart wouldn't agree. 
I want to see my daughter. Just once, only just once he cried. My ex-wife had lied to you. I love my daughter after a moment of thought. The family agreed and asked David to revisit the next day. He met his daughter on their lawn the following day. It was the most painful meeting ever that brought tears to his eyes. Well, he was happy to see his child he never knew existed. He was heartbroken to think of the things she'd endured without his involvement in her life. David took slow, wobbly steps toward her. He was nervous about how she'd react, darling Lisa. I'm your daddy, he said. I've come for you, daddy. Well, why have you come now? I don't want to see you. My parents told me that you've come for me. I hate you. Go away, she feuded. Why do you need me now, David's heart? Almost. I always wanted a baby, but your mom hid you from me. I always loved you and missed you so much. I thought you were dead. Your mom made me believe all their lies, he sobbed. At this point, Lisa realized David was genuinely sorry and had come to reconcile. Oh. Do you still love me? It's been 14 years. But do you still have that same spark you had when you ran home to hold me when I was born, she asked. I do, darling. You've grown, but you're still that baby. I wanted to see him cuddle with you, replied David, tears streaming down his eyes, moved by his daughter's love for him. Lisa agreed to move in with him, but on the condition that he would still allow her to meet her foster parents. Two days later, David returned home with his daughter. Oh, he was the happiest ever that day. Lisa burst into tears in her nursery, which David had kept in her memory. I love you, Daddy, she cried, hugging her father, who shed only tears of joy that day.